My name is Chandler Guba. I'm CTO at Oxaflow. And uh, I've been working for observability all my professional life, uh, collecting logs, monitoring, alerting. And I'm a huge fan of Kubernetes since the early days. Like for six years, I'm, I'm a Kubernetes user operator. And I founded open source projects like the logging operator, which is a CNCF sandbox project now. And uh, my latest gig is telemetry controller, which I will uh, describe uh, in more details um, today. And what can I say? I'm an observability enthusiast. And uh, to just you know, refresh our memories, there are three basic things that I want to cover, and we will go into deeper the technical stack. First of all, the Kubernetes logging, um, nothing new uh, since like six years. Um, the pods are uh, pushing the standard outputs on the node file system. The files are sitting on the node file system. You have to install an agent that tail those files and transport those logs to uh, somewhere else, uh, your preferred destination. Uh, the problem with that approach, uh, this is the, still the best practice on Kubernetes, is that it makes logs to be cluster resources because all the different namespaces and pods are mixed together on the node level, so there is no isolation, no access control, no policy, uh, nothing. The second uh, basic uh, thing I want to cover is the multi-tenancy of Kubernetes. Kubernetes provides basic uh, isolation based on namespaces. However, uh, the practice uh, is that uh, a tenant would require much more than just a namespace, maybe more namespaces, maybe some configuration. So, you know, practice in the wild like Rancher Projects and Capsule uh, work in a way that they uh, implement a tenant resource on top of Kubernetes and uh, they describe a tenant as one or more namespaces uh, declared by a namespace label selector. So the namespace has a tenant uh, yellow label. It will uh, connect it to the uh, yellow tenant. And uh, last but not least, open telemetry. Open telemetry is a collection of API SDKs and tools to generate, instrument, collect, and export telemetry data. Uh, I hope that uh, most of you are familiar with Open Telemetry app, Open Telemetry Collector. But I want to highlight that it's a vendor neutral protocol, which is a really good thing, and it's specific for telemetry data. Uh, there were some older protocols like Fluent uh, for FluentD, Lumberjack for Firebeat, and uh, Syslog for, for the Stone Ages. Uh, but uh, neither of them was uh, really you know, used by all the tools, and o open telemetry protocol seems to be the one that the industry will pick. There were attempts to use generic protocols like HTTP or gRPC, but if you are using general protocols, you are uh, losing the fact that you are handling telemetry data, so you can do the optimization uh, that comes with uh, the knowledge that you know what you are transporting. And the collector, uh, is a reference implementation in Go and widely adopted, which is a key attribute for an open source project to be uh, widely uh, 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 used by big players in the ecosystem. So why multi-tenancy is hard? Uh, let's see uh, from the nodes pers perspective how it looks like. So I already told you that the pod uh, standard output logs are sitting on the disk uh, uh, of the uh, running node. And if you add tenant on top of these layers, which the Kubernetes have no idea that you are, uh, you know, you are using different tenants, it makes you know, not just the namespace mixed together, but the tenants mixed together, and you have zero information about that. Let's see how it looks from the agent side. So you are tailing files. There is a content, like in this example, an Nginx ingress access log. The first, what the agent will do is to parse the path uh, of the log file. And it actually uh, includes the namespace and pod uh, information about the content. So then the agent knows which namespace and which pod the data coming from. Uh, can go to the Kubernetes API and query more information like pod labels or, or the namespace labels, and reaching the metadata with all this information, and then it can you know, transport or route or, or do whatever it wants. So what could go wrong uh, in this shared environment? Almost everything. Uh, there is a huge shared configuration on those uh, uh, agents, um, usually deployed as a daemon set. And because all the namespaces and tenants are mixed together, 
Uh, there can be configuration conflicts, resource exhaustion, uh, a very nasty version is back pressure, which I will double click in, in a minute. But, uh, you know, error handling, uh, buffering issues. So if you handle logs on Kubernetes, you, uh, I'm sure, met some of these uh, problems. So back pressure. Back pressure means that even one faulty destination or, or part of the log pipeline can cause to halt all the processing of the logs. So in this example, tenant A have an exporter B, misconfigured or it's down the destination. It will chain down to the file log receiver, which is receiving the, uh, the files, tailing the files on the node, and uh, telling the receiver that I can send logs so the whole chain will block. There are workarounds to do this. So one example is that uh, dedicate each tenant their own receiver. So you are uh, not tailing all the files, and because the namespace is actually in the file path, you can have these uh, namespaces in the file path pattern. So each tenant will have its own receiver. So uh, the tenant A faulty exporter will only block the tenant A uh, log uh, flow in this uh, case. However, any of the changes in the namespaces or tenants, uh, you have to update this configuration. And if you are familiar with Kubernetes, you know where, where I'm heading. So for these automations, we usually uh, use operators to handle that so we don't have to uh, manage this by hand. And telemetry controller is an operator on top of open telemetry. Its main goal is to turn telemetry events into Kubernetes resources. So you get back the isolation, the access control, and um, the automation around open telemetry collector. You might ask why we need this uh, operator, because we already have open telemetry collector operator, for example. So open telemetry collector is a low level tool. It's a, it's a very flexible tool, but with great flexibility comes great uh, responsibility. And it's very easy to misconfigure that. And even if uh, there is a very simple Kubernetes uh, logging pipeline, it can you know, like have around 100 to 200 lines of code to get a, a pod log until to a destination. And the telemetry controller job is to provide an open-ended way how you handle uh, the logs on Kubernetes and later on matrix and traces. Um, the goal is like with the cert manager. If you uh, want to manage certificates on Kubernetes, you don't think about what to use. You use cert manager because it's easy, it's convenient. So the Telemetry controller aims to be that for the logs on Kubernetes. Uh, as an operator, it operates based on uh, custom resource definitions. I will go through this uh, uh, architecture diagram, and we will follow, uh, I'm not sure if you're seeing, but on the uh, left side, the yellow box is uh, a pod named app1 uh, in the A namespace, and we will follow how it uh, you know, travels through the pipeline. The first custom resource is the collector. It has the basic settings of an open telemetry collector. Uh, it, it's responsible for the deployment of the daemon set. And there is one uh, important uh, attribution uh, there, the tenant selector. Uh, you, uh, the collector can um, choose which, uh, not choose, but you, know, you set on the collector which tenant it is responsible for. Uh, there can be many reasons why you want to run multiple collectors. You want to pin tenants or to, we I mean, want to pin uh, collectors to tenants or, or node groups, or you have like uh, more architecture in your Kubernetes. I've seen uh, hybrid uh, clusters with Windows containers and Linux containers as well. So you need a bit different uh, configuration for that. So we got the uh, collector, uh, we collecting logs. The next step is the tenant level. The tenant resource is uh, responsible for defining the tenant. It works kind of the same way like in Rancher on, on Capsule. You can define two selectors. One is the log source namespace selectors. As the name suggests, it defines the namespaces that the tenant can receive logs from. And the subscription namespace selector is the namespaces where the tenant can configure uh, its log collection. So the the collector and tenant is an administrator level resources. So the Kubernetes operator, the administrator have to set that up. So this is the playground and the tenant can play in this playground. Uh, the tenant can create a subscription. 
And with a subscription, you can subscribe to your logs from the tenant. So you can decide to you want to collect all the logs that are available to you in your namespaces, or using an OTTL uh, expression to root for just you know, specific namespace, specific pod labels, or anything that's provided by the uh, collector daemon set. And you, will, you can set the output, or you have to set the output, where to transport those logs. And the last destination is, of course, the output, which is pretty straightforward. You will you know, uh, set the destination endpoint and some credential to make it work. And uh, we will see it in practice. Uh, my demo environment looks like this. I got an Nginx ingress uh, uh, set up on my local Kubernetes. And we have two upstream, one in the database namespace and one in the web namespace. Uh, the one in the database will, uh, the ingress configured that the uh, dev.db suffix uh, request host will be routed to the database. The uh, dev.web suffix request will uh, uh, route it to the uh, web uh, namespace. Let's start with the most simple example that can be possible. We have a collector, one uh, tenant, and I want to collect all the logs into a destination. So now we jump to applying a couple of resources, and I will go through all of them. And uh, we will see the effect of it. So what I just did is that I instrumented a collector that has a tenant selector, the collector cluster. You can see that this tenant and the next resource has this label, so it will be included in the configuration. Have the log source namespace selector set to all the namespaces, the subscription namespace selector to the namespaces that have the tenant shared label, and there is a subscription that uh, says that root all the logs, you know, the empty root statement say all the logs, uh, to an open observe output. And I created an output this garbage on the top is just you know, grabbing the credentials for uh, my open observe uh, instance, which is an Elasticsearch uh, compatible uh, log destination, and creating that output. And if I did everything correctly, I will have a lot of different kind of logs here. And uh, you can see that we got the log body, we got the labels, you know, like the namespaces, pod labels here. And on top of that, we got the tenant and subscription that the uh, messages came from. So this is the most uh, trivial example. And maybe I will show you that this is already like uh, 200 lines of configuration in OpenTelemetry. You can't see the line numbers. Oh, you can. I can't. <laughs> uh, it's, it's around like two or 300 uh, lines of configuration. And uh, one of the benefits is using telemetry controller that is Kubernetes native. There is a cool trick that uh, I can just list all the resources. If I not telemetry. All the resources with a kubectl command. So I get the collector here, saying that the, there is a shared tenant that it's uh, connected. I get the shared tenant here with all the namespaces that it's uh, uh, getting logs from. I got the uh, subscription reference on the tenant. And here we have the subscription with the referenced outputs. And I got the outputs here as well. If something goes wrong, there are some uh, state indicators, they're ready, uh, not ready, and some error response as well. But let move on. let's move on. So go to a multi-tenant example. In this case, we will have two more tenants, the web and the database, uh, respectively for the web namespace and the database namespace. And uh, to provide some logs there, because they are you know, like a web upstream, I will start a polar uh, script that will uh, call respectively the .web.db uh, um, uh, URLs. I will apply, again, the resources, and after that, see if I did everything right. So the example is very similar to the previous one. 
we got the same collector. We got the shared tenant, although I restricted it to use only the Ingress Nginx namespace uh, because just to re reuse the noise. I got the same subscription, and I got the new tenant, the database tenant, with uh, a subscription to all the database-related uh, logs. And similarly for the web tenant with the web namespaces. And in the output, I didn't mention, but it open observe, like in Elasticsearch Index, there is a stream name uh, called, uh, which is you know, like how they divide logs. So for the shared tenant, I will use shared. For the DB tenant, I will, I will use DB. And for the web tenant, I will use web. So I've checked back to open observe. I should have, you know, like the Nginx access logs here, which we can see. These are the Nginx ingress access logs. And we got new streams, which is the uh, upstream logs just, you know, serving the request uh, in different uh, uh, tenants in the DB tenant and similarly the web tenant. So we routed. Uh, the proper logs from the proper tenants in this example. And uh, there is another cool thing that we can do because these are, you know, like uh, uh, web services but sharing the same ingress controller that's operated by the cluster administrator. It would be cool to get the access log for, for the respective tenants. So I, I want to, as a web tenant, I want to get the ingress log as well, but only the part that I'm you know, uh, responsible for so that, that uh, reaches my, my uh, upstream. And to do that, there is a couple of things we have to do. First of all, let's check the uh, in ingress log. Uh, there is a little bit of hint that the database upstream is handling the request, but it would be cool to have the uh, request host in the logs. And as Kubernetes ingress, it's very easy to, to do. We just need to alter the configuration. This is the regular ingress log format. And I just put the dollar host uh, template uh, as the first parameter. And if I'm applying this here, checking back the uh, logs, you will see that the first parameter will be uh, the the request host. That's cool, we got the request host, so we get the information and the content. One more thing we have to do is to parse the configuration, uh, parse the, uh, the log content, and usually uh, we don't advise to use any parsing or transformation in telemetry controller because that's the root cause usually for, for, for noisy neighbors or resource execution. But because the tenant and the collector is a cluster operator uh, uh, responsibility to be very configured, and I know what I'm doing, uh, I can inject some parsing into the tenant. And what you see here is that I just uh, put a quick re uh, regular expression here, and the first uh, parameter is extracting the we host. And uh, I set the resource attribute we host into this par uh, value to the parse we host. I have to do this. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but Kubern, uh, open telemetry logs are hierarchical. So on the top level, there is resource. Under that, there is scope, one or many. And under a scope, there are one or many log records. So the same, uh, same resource uh, information, like if I have multiple log lines from a pod, only the resource will con contain the pod name, so you don't have to duplicate that information, but you will have uh, many log records there. And Open Telemetry Collector uh, uh, has a, a plugin called uh, Routing uh, Connector, and it only can route based on the resource attributes. And under the hood, Telemetry Collector uses the resource, uh, the, uh, the uh, router connector. That's why we have to use the resource attribute. It's just a bit of detail. Uh, doesn't matter if you, uh, you know, I just uh, mixed up a couple of things. Anyway, we got the information in the log. We parsed the log. So we got one more thing that we need. It, uh, we need somehow to transfer from this namespace to the respective web and the, the database namespace, the information. And that is where we have the bridge resource. This is a new resource in telemetry controller. And it's very simple. 
it has a source tenant, a target tenant, and an OTTL expression where you decide uh, based on what condition you want to route from uh, this tenant. And as we already parsed the vhost the, uh, uh, in, 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 ten in the tenant level, we can use the vhost for the routing. So let me apply the configuration again. And what we have to see in Open Observe that I still have all the information uh, here in the shared environment, but in the DB environment, for example, we will have the respected access log. I'm not sure if you're seeing this, I will zoom. The respected access log, I got as a side effect the parsed message as well. And, uh, and you will see that the vhost is, is, is already there again. And the same applies for, for the web tenant where the respective access logs are routed there uh, based on the vhost. And uh, before the presentation, I uh, posted on LinkedIn that there is a nasty bug in Open Telemetry Collector. And because we have just uh, a few uh, amount of time, I will uh, not ask you, but show you what is it. Uh, we talked about this resource scope and the uh, log uh, uh, hierarchical levels. And if you see, for example, this log, uh, we are in the DB tenant. So, but it starts with the web uh, uh, request host. And if we check the namespace name, uh, or not the namespace, but the vhost, sorry, the zooming is not, Okay, so we check the vhost, it still said the DB, but it's clearly the parse vhost is the web. And the thing is that in, in open telemetry controller, uh, collector, resources are references. So all, all, when we do the transformation, the last log record uh, parsing will be updated in the resource. So it's not cloning the resource as it should. It will be, it, it is a bug that will be fixed in the upstream, but I just, you know, I found out it on, you know, like uh, two days ago. So, uh, just a quick summary. Uh, this is telemetry controller. Uh, the goal is to uh, simplify your uh, collection. It doesn't aim to be have every feature available from Open Telemetry Collector because uh, uh, there is the uh, Open Telemetry Collector operator for that and it doesn't aim to provide aggregation capabilities. That means that no transformation or parsing uh, should be done on the tenant side. If you want to do this, the tenant can start uh, open telemetry collector stateful set and do the configuration there. It will be much more simpler because the routing part is already done there, so it can even use the subscription labels as identification of what kind of logs it's receiving and do the transformation. Um, I said that I, I was a uh, uh, funding uh, engineer of the logging operator, and uh, we decided to uh, move to the telemetry controller. Of course, we, didn't, we don't have feature parity yet, but we are working on to implement everything um, that is in the logging operator uh, um, feature sets. We got the container logs, we got you know, like secrets for outputs, uh, the shared logs that I showed you, and we got monitoring uh, as well. I did this on yesterday. Uh, so it's a pretty cool way to visualize the open telemetry collector metrics based on the tenant and subscriptions. So you can see the uh, uh, tenant EPS, BPS, input, output, and subscription uh, input, output in here. And you can, you know, like browse and, 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 and uh, you know, have a full overview on that. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that was all. I can't go back to my, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, some useful links. You can download the presentation. It doesn't matter for now. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, sure. <laughs>
the slides should be uploaded. In it's already text. uploaded, so Is in the shed.com you can okay. download. Okay, great. Thank you a lot. Let's give our speaker a round of applause. <laughs> Questions, yes. Hi. Uh, first off, very cool. Um, uh, in addition to this, like I'm, I'm assuming I could easily just write a processor within the hotel collector to reference at least maybe get info about a tenant, kind of use it as like a, a way to abstract and still kind of maintain just a core open telemetry collector process. Does that kind of make sense? As, or do you kind of see this as just being, or the, the idea of this tenant and subscription being completely isolated outside of like an open telemetry pipeline experience. So I'm, I'm not sure I followed, so. I want to do tenants yes. and traces. Yes. I just want to take it from the log context, that's all. Yeah, um, yeah, so in the future, yes. So first we wanted to tackle the log uh, parts of the, uh, of the things. After I, I would like to add the metrics and traces as well. And then we get this, you know, like uh, conversation. Uh, of that. Yeah, it's totally in the region, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah.